Okay, at today's class is, um, uh, so now we are going to jump into EWM means like, you know, SAP. So where we are going to, uh, today's class more on organization structure and uh, how we can build the S4 organized structure. What are the prerequisites for us? And also we are going to um, create a EWM org structure. We will see how much we can uh, finish within the two hours time. We will try because you know that is a, we have to set up both um, S4 organized structure and also AWM mark structure. But we will try our best how much we can finish today to our session, we'll create it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we will discuss today um, S4 organized structure, like, you know, creation of the company code. And also we will see uh, creation of the plant, storage locations. And also like, you know, first we have to define every, every parameter here. And also we have to create a dummy warehouse in S4 system. And also we have to create a EWM organized structure. What are the elements we, we need it um, to move further? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay. So, so these are the so typical, you know, any organization, you know, uh, the top level is a client and uh, under the client is a company. Now the company and the company code. Okay, what we will do now, we will create um, uh, SZ, I mean, uh, Sastra Geek, you know, Sastra Geek Corp as a company and also as a company code. Uh, that's where we will do that. We understand that, you know, Sastra Geek Corp is, is doing like manufacturing these parts, manufacturing a couple of me mechanical equipments, not to name in you know, something, maybe some uh, power industry components or anything, okay? This is Satra Geek company is a manufacturing certain products. So what they are going to do is after manufacturing the products, they put it back to the warehouse. From the warehouse, they will, they will sell it to the entire globe. You can say any corner of the countries. That's where we are going to work on that. So first of all, um, we need to create a, company and the company code. So as you know, the company code is a legal requirement in terms of the, um, um, any, any, because if you want to start any company, the company code is a legal requirement for the government anywhere in the world, okay? So we have to create a company and also is a, because since is a company is a legal entity, so we have to create a company code. Under the company code, uh, we will create a couple of plans. Okay, assume that our company, uh, it is based in US. Okay, and uh, under that we have a plans. Assume that we can, we, we can create a couple of plans. One plant is in Dallas, one plant is it is in uh, California. Okay, so two plants we will create it. And uh, each plant, we will create storage locations. Okay, we will create a several storage locations and um, Within the storage locations, we will, we will categorize how many storage locations require for warehouse management, how many storage locations require for, for, non, for IM based storage locations. Remember, once you create a storage locations under the plant, then you can take, okay, I need two storage locations to manage for the warehouse management storage. Remaining other locations, I will be IM based. That is called inventory based. Remember, as we discussed, am I right? Warehouse is not a mandatory in the business. It all depends on that. Without warehouse also, you can run the business. What you will do, all, all equipments, you know, all parts, all finished goods, all raw material, you will keep at the uh, storage locations. Okay? As you know that storage locations, it gives the only the quantity and it gives the value, value in a S4 side. Remember, any storage location, if you want to see the stock, it gives total quantity of the products, total quantity of the finished good or semi finished, and also it gives the value of the product. Okay, that is the IM based storage location. Any storage locations, it is in IM based. IM means inventory management. Okay. If, if you want to see the stock, particular storage location, 
we don't know which storage location how big it is smaller is a larger is we don't know that but it gives only the quantity and value only so you won't get in an exact precise location that is the where our ewm is coming to picture where you can say that our stock is particular storage location and also you can say particular location even geographical location also you can give that At, at the lowest point, you know the lowest point we have discussed the bin. Okay, you can say that this com this product having so and so quantity, it is a, it is is lying at the particular bin, particular storage type. Okay, it gives you even geometrical location, it gives a precise location, but it won't give you the value. Okay, anywhere you come across, what is mean by IM based storage location? And EWM based storage locations. You need to be very clear. IM based storage location it gives you quantity and value. But whereas EWM based storage locations, you will you will get the quantity with exact precision location. I mean, taken to geometrical location, but it won't gives the value. That is the only the difference between the inventory management storage locations, EWM managed storage locations. But it's clear, okay? So, as we said, like you know, we will create one Sasragi Corp. Under that, we will create two plants. One is the base that the Dallas. One is the base that the California. And uh, first, of what we will do is we will take one Dallas plant, uh, any plant, you know, it's no matter it is, and uh, whatever plant we will under the one plant. and we will create a several storage locations and within several storage locations we will categorize a couple of storage locations as im based locations and um, we need a minimum two because even one is also enough if you wanted but if is a two storage locations is a good practice any warehouse um, you know if you want to maintain you know if you want to track each and every movements you want to see receiving and uh, how much stock is available for sale it is the best to go for two storage location approach okay but, so we will we will take two storage locations for e ewm side so one is for receiving and dock another one is uh, available for sale okay and we will also create one dummy warehouse in s4 system because if you want to transfer the data from s4 system to ewm system you should have a dummy warehouse number in s4 side remember this dummy warehouse number is a three digit code maximum is only three digit code okay this is a three digit code okay this s4 dummy warehouse you need to link it to the ewm warehouse number this is a four digit code okay remember this is the three digit dummy warehouse Directly linked with the our EWM warehouse number, four digit code. Okay, so at least I know that um, we are our focus more on EWM side. But since we are learning training, right? So um, see, we who is going to create a company code in a real time? Who is going to create a company code? It's a finance guys, right? See, that's what you should know that this company code in a real time FI guys, finance guys is going to take care. so is not our job who is going to create a plan the plans are created by the material management system material management okay or production um, pp people you know production planning people also okay so for company code finance guys and um, for plant and storage locations as a created by material management or pp guys okay and definitely dummy warehouse who is going to create dummy warehouse definitely our job so our ewm consultants will create dummy warehouse okay see i'm trying to give every information you know so that you will understand that and who is going to create some of the business partners you know customers vendors all these things we will discuss later okay whichever part we are doing so we will focus on that only so real time finance guys company code Plant is MMPP and uh, dummy warehouse CWM, and also we know that sales, am I right? Since I didn't present here, so sales is also part of it. Uh, sales, and uh, so who is going to create sales? 
sales organization, sales office, and the division, channel, shipping point, all these things, you know, who is going to create? So any sales related, okay? Sales and distribution, assume that, okay? Any sales and distribution, definitely um, the sales guys. So SAP sales guys is going to create it, okay? In the real time, what you are going to try to do is, whichever part you are going to work, you will play major role, okay? So once you create company code and the company, how you are going to link is, you know, once you define every parameters in the S4 system, how you are going to um, make it assignment, you know, you need to make a relation between this ever, right? You have to interact. How is the company code is directly linked with the plant? How the plant is directly linked with the storage location? How storage location plant are linked to the um, dummy warehouse? And uh, dummy warehouse. Finally, you will uh, dummy warehouse. You will you will uh, uh, establish the relation between the dummy warehouse to EWM warehouse. Okay, and uh, in the EWM side, we need to create a four-digit code warehouse. And uh, see, this warehouse is also within the plant. Am I right? This warehouse is also, as I said, we have a plant in um, AV Dallas or anywhere. Okay, that plant you need to assign this warehouse belongs to which plant. You need to tell the system saying, okay, this warehouse belongs to so-and-so plant. And also the warehouse is a just a definition. It's a just a name. There is no address for the warehouse. Then how do I give an address for the warehouse? By creating a supply chain, okay? Supply chain, it gives you geographical location it gives you like you know um, some business attributes so supply chain is in a geography is a physical location i mean say it, it gives you a geographical location and under the supply chain it gives you some attributes okay so if you want to uh, give some attributes sales office shipping office door and um, the receiving so all these business parameters if you want to, all this under the supply chain in it. So supply chain, you need to having an address and also geographical location. If you assign this supply chain, if you assign warehouse to supply chain, then warehouse will get an address. Just warehouse, just is a definition only. There is no significant, there is no address for AWM. Unless you create a supply chain in it, assign it, then warehouse gets the address, okay? The supply chain in chain it, without supply chain in it, you cannot perform any warehouse activities. You cannot do anything. So this is a mandatory requirement to create a supply chain in it. You need to define what is address and what is the geo exact location also. Geographical longitudinal latitude and also it system calculates automatically the based on the address. And also some business attributes, okay? What are the business attributes I said? If I want to say shipping office, there is no um, system doesn't know where is the shipping office in within the warehouse because supply chain gives that. Even warehouse, even a receiving dock, even um, uh, shipping. So all these business attributes, um, if you want to assign it through the supply chain only, you can assign it. Okay, another term, you, you know, uh, is important if you want to create a warehouse, there is a beep, okay? We need an um, owner, am I right? See, any warehouse, somebody should maintain, am I right? Any warehouse, some, some owner should be there. That person is called default party entitled. Remember, for example, for any country, we should have a prime minister or president. He is just a default party entitled. He is not a he is a one is a temporarily owner. He is authority for during that period only. He is a designated during that period only. After that, somebody will replace. Again, the, um, the activities will take. Somebody will take there. So, if you want to maintain warehouse, you should also have one owner for this warehouse. That owner is called custodian or also called default party entitled dispose. Okay, any warehouse, you need to give the address 
how I can give address through the supply chain in it. How I can give the any owner, how I can assign any owner, the custodian, so that you know he will uh, um, he he will takes care of everything for all shipping activities, receiving activities under the custodian. Okay, the custodian. Who is the custodian? Any person within the organization. The, how we can create a custodian in EWM side or any S4 side by using BP, business partner. Okay, we will discuss what do you mean by business partner. Okay, all this thing. Okay, I can create a custodian, the person within the organization as a business partner. And then I can assign business partner to warehouse and supply chain it. Then he will fulfill the warehouse uh, warehouse um, structure warehouse number without the supply chain in it and the custodian okay you can it, it won't make any sense for that warehouse we will we'll discuss what about this one later okay so just we will focus all the, all these things so definitely all this the ewm part so only ewm guys guys is going to take care okay but this one dummy you have to take care Excuse me, sir. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sir, this uh, custodian, what is the other name you said? Default? Yeah, default party entitled dispose. Anyway, we, we, we can, I, I, yeah, entitled dispose. But I can, I can, okay. I can show that in the essay. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Uh, Naidu, uh, I also have one question. Uh, like, you know, for the decentralized, I understand we need warehouse uh, created in the S4 and another warehouse created in EWM just to and have if, the flow. If never mind, we will, will, we will, uh, means we'll put up and stop for us discussing all these things. Otherwise, you know, we will miss the flow. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, Once I put that no, question in the yeah, chat yeah, yeah. so you can Start, answer yeah, later yeah. no, no, no. your convenience. We will do all the questions, but the only thing is, you know, we will. I mean, it should not uh, like, you know, disrupt our flow. So once yeah, we yeah, create definitely. it, then we will answer every question, right? So don't worry Go about ahead. it. We'll answer. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I know that a lot of people are aware of somebody. I, I don't know that in your background. Maybe I will come to know uh, sooner or later. Because next week, by the time we are all working, I mean, coming here, I will come to know every individual's their background. So that, you know, how much level I can go in depth so that you know, even the person who don't know SAP, so they should understand it. I know that the person is already experienced. The he, he, he does not need it. He does not need. So, so once I understand your your um, your experience, also it, it makes for me difference actually. So that what level you know depth I can go, so that you know every individuals can understand that. Okay. So as you know that any any plant any company plant means what. The any company having certain activities, any activities, whether they manufacture it, whether they just, you know, distribution the parts or um, generally in any plant means certain activities, some, some activities are going on. That. Okay. So um, depends on the business, what kind of business in, in, we have, we have a majority, several industries we have, oil and gas, um, manufacturing industries and automotive industries. Um, the aerospace industries, energy sector, electronic sector. So there are several sectors we have. So each sector having their own, uh, if you take any manufacturing, what they do, they produce the products. So to produce the product in a legal entity, in a, as I said, company code and plant is required. So under the plant only, every activity is be performed, okay? The plant, the plant is also divided into several storage locations. Under the storage locations, then you will always divide whether you want to you want to warehouse management or just without warehouse management is inventory management. I am based. That means no warehouse. Only the, uh, they have in the plant. They have a several storage locations. They keep the product and they will issue the products to the manufacturing. They produce it. They keep it. But what is the problem if it's a small Okay, small industry is fine, prop and medium industry, big industry. Is it possible in the storage location? Even, 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 even small store also, any retail store, 
small, he cannot understand where he is keeping the items. He don't know where he is keeping. Even medium-sized retail investors, they are moving into some software because where their product is located, okay, when they receive it, where they keep, and, uh, and also when to get it, how to get it, how quickly they can get it. They can't search them, right, where it is lying in that. The storage location, as I mentioned earlier, it, it just gives of quantity and um, value only. It won't give us exact precision location. That is a where our e warehouse is going to picture, why warehouse is so important. If you are maintaining millions of parts, remember in a real time, in a real time warehouse, minimum I can say 80 millions of parts. Okay, I, I have come across 80 million parts in the warehouse. Okay. At least 80 million means around there are 40,000 to 70,000 parts, different parts. 40 to 70,000 parts in, in each part, each having one part, if you, if you categorize, there are 30 to 40, 70,000 parts we have. And almost 80,000 millions uh, uh, overall uh, stock. Then is it possible for us to... Uh, uh, look into that which location even storage look very difficult so that is a where warehouse gives you right picture right information which location as i said it gives you geographical location of the part exact location it's saying that this part so so and so the quantity and this is the precise location in the warehouse that is a um, uh, uh, like you know uh, warehouse um, uh, EWM, it gives that. So now we will jump into um, the software. Okay, just I know some people already, you know that. Hope um, you all can see this, this uh, SAP screen and um, I think you, you might have got already access. So typically, you know, you can use the SAP login. This is the SAP login. And um, some people already know, some people may not know, it's okay. Just, you know, you can um, click this one. And one more thing is, if you want to do any settings, you know, SAP login, go to options. You can always play around, okay? For example, visual design and font settings and everything, you can always, okay? You can always see that, okay? If you want to see bigger and bigger details so that when you open SAP, you can see bigger uh, font size. You can always play around. And also visualization, where you want to see easy access, you know, you want to see transactions, you know, make sure these controls, you know, flag on so that you can see transactions. These two, okay, not all. What is the font setting you want to do? You can always do. And an interaction design, visual one, where you can see controls so that you can see transaction. Otherwise, if you don't flag it, you may not see transactions in a SAP easy access. Okay. So, clear it. And it's just double click if you are already aware, it's fine, you know. And uh, the login details. Okay. This one. So, Hope you all see him, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this one, you know, you look like, you know, you all know SAP, if you know, it's fine. So this is the SAP easy access. You can always switch two options. One is the easy access. One is a UI. Okay. Well, sorry, IMZ. One is the easy access and IMZ. See, you can, you can play around this one and this is a switch over to. So you can always play around. You can see this one. This is the SAP easy access. Where any uh, our our EWM comes on under logistics, so all the logistics so EWM extended warehouse management. So under that, you can always see what are the if it's a monitor related, what are the terms. Okay, let me see. Wait. One second, I should get it actually. Should I close it? Sorry, guys. Okay, 
it's fine. I don't want to waste your time now, it's fine. I'll check it later. Okay, so this is the easy access. If you want to go for, you know, uh, easy access, who is going to use easy access? Okay, remember, after you implement EWM, only business users are going to use it, only business users. That means business users or end users who are going to use these transactions. Okay, that is called SAP Easy Access. So you are assume that you are a WM consultant for set up everything system system and everything. We may use some transaction, but real time, definitely the business users. Okay, who is going to use your EWM? Okay, they are also called end users. Okay, this is all SAP Easy Access transactions is used by the business users or end users. So now, how, if I want to go for configuration side, where I can create all these plans and everything, okay? The transaction is called SPRO, okay? The transaction is called SPRO. It takes into customizing. Under the customizing, you can see SAP reference ID, implementation guide, IMZ means, implementation guide okay the transaction is the sprvo so just i typed sprvo okay this one you will come into this one mz so whatever the structure we are going to create now see under the enterprise structure this is the where we are going to use it okay go to the enterprise structure so there are we have a two options one is a definition and assignment. As I said earlier, you have to define the company, company code, plant, storage location, and purchasing organization, and sales organization, uh, and also shipping point. Everything you define it first. Once you define it, even in a dummy warehouse, once you define it, then you need to assign it. That's two jobs. One is a definition and assignment. Okay. First, we will move it into definition one. Okay. Under the definition, as I said, we have to create a company and a company code. So under the definition, first, this thing is a proper hierarchical, comes very systematically. We will also go one by one. We won't jump into here and there. Okay. First, under the financial accounting, as I said, we have to create a company. Okay. First, to define a company. Okay. As I said, we are not going to like, you know, to um, to set up every um, uh, things from the scratch. Since this is the SAP best practice system, SAP best practice system, you can, I can call it the SAP best practice system. So we can utilize so many things, like for example, finance. Finance already existing. The 1710, 1710 company code, company or company code, is a best practice system in a S4 system, S4. So we will use 1710 as much as possible, wherever possible, 1710, okay, to minimize the configurations so that we will focus on more on EWM side, okay? Even EWM, we have 1710 best practice, but we will use from there and we will minimize as much as possible. Doesn't mean that, okay, I'm minimizing means you are, you are missing something. You are not missing anything. You are learning everything, but we don't need some of the things. For example, finance is not our job, right? But 1710 already is available using, for example, ledger account, general ledger accounts. Accounts are very important. Account receivable and payable. This is not our job, but finance guys, they will take care. And as I said, some of the material management, what they do, they create a purchase organization, storage location, plans, and so on. Similarly, sales guys, they create a sales organization, sales structure, they will make it. So what, whatever uh, we need it, we will, we will focus on that. Okay, as I said, since 1710 is the best practice system, so without hesitation, for example, you can see 1710. The 1710, it is based on the Peri Alto. So we will also use same city, same thing. This is our company, okay? See, company can be anywhere. Plant can be anywhere. Don't think that plant and company should be the same location. 
company i can create some palo alto and i can put one plant in dallas one plant in california doesn't matter okay so what i will do now first as i said like you know even you can display and then you can just to copy as okay Let's try to copy as and as i said you know i am going to create sg because it's astra gig in a real time you know there is a number do you want to put a number i can put a number if you want it in a real time we never use any alphabeticals unless a business requirement okay or else is a four digit code remember is a 1710 out like that exactly same if you want i can use it for example i can start um, uh, maybe 51710 maybe one five seven one zero if you wanted use it same thing because i can start with a five you people can start your own name also if you want to use it okay but as i said in real time with the number uh, but i will also go for number only i don't want to go for something so i will go for five seven one zero is a company name is also give five seven one one zero and this is our company what i can put shastra greek car per something i can give that okay if people can start with a number only rather than with a name so that you feel a real time in you know, a number only so just copy it and uh, just flag this copy as is a, the top one just copy as don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos number entry and just save it see as soon as you save it this flag is the prompt customize the request this is the transport okay so what i have to do is like you know um, i can create is nothing is there as of now so what i can create remember this is a transport means all the information whatever the whatever configuration you are doing everything stored under this one okay everything stored under this one for example you are working with a development system you store on the development system if you want to move this configuration to the quality system using this transport you can transport transfer this data okay that is a, a layman term i'm telling okay transports are transferring the configuration from one system to another system we will discuss what do you mean sandbox what is the development system what is the quality system what is the pre production what is the production system so we will discuss later okay assuming that you are working under a development system assuming you are working under development system you are storing every information configuration under this transport okay so as i said uh, our is 57 5710 as um, sg sazra creek corp okay just i am putting as it okay under this one i am creating a request see creating a request that is called transport okay create a transport okay 5710 is a my company company code adjust i said esg corp okay so it says it comes automatically if you if you have any project certainly you can give project id since we don't have project so we are not giving any project just to give a short description if uh, if a, if a real time now we will have a project id so we are signing just to save it then it cre system creates the request look at this system created a one request so all the information you are going to store under this one okay 900781 okay just a flag it okay now it is stored so the data was saved so now we created a we just we defined a company now okay. come back so our our 1710 is this one see again you can see all so company 17 is zico this address you know you can keep it next and next see controlling is not our interest you know so as much as possible we will minimize it and the next one is i am going to use the edit copy delete company code as i said i will always use a best practice system select this company code and company and you know there is a co copy org object copy that i just said best practice system is 1710 use this 1710 copy to our 571 company 
okay company code this is our okay so you are copying from 1710 to this one so that all the company related for example general ledger accounts all the information you know um for even um controlling part so many things when you will transport you are transferring from existing company code configuration into your company code so we can minimize our effort okay i'm copying now see only copy gl accounts if you want to allocate the same or chart of account target company as a source company code do you want to copy the gl account code yes system also proposes suggests us saying that yes okay always follow just you know what sap says this one just say yes and also saying controlling area is assigned to a company code do you want to copy assignment controlling area is a system is saying yes you also say yes and also saying is a reference company code local currency usd you all say that here do you want to allocate different local currency target company no you can say that no okay if you want allocate then you can say no okay just say no certain data is not certain that's fine anyway it's fine just you say just click it do you want to really want to transport number ranges just say no because we don't need um 1710 num uh, transport number range so we don't just say no okay so now what i am doing is now i'm con i'm transferring i mean um, transferring all the data 1710 to our company so only we transport it okay it's fine okay just you say a flag and all so now we have already tra transferred all the data so you say that so now everything you are storing under the our transport request 900781 transport request okay enter year to zero interval subject so okay again you just continue until you know you copy all the data okay I think we already copied them, right? Enter your data in the intro. It's fine, I think. So. Yeah, it's fine. You know, we already copied this one. Now. Just to be patient enough to copy all the things. Company code seventeen ten copy to without one number range objects. Don't worry about that. We can always fix if there's something wrong. But it should it's perfect. This should come. But we copied seventeen ten to find the seven. Okay, some without number range objects. Don't worry. We we can always say any time. Okay, that's fine. So we already company code. We are copied now. Okay, so now we can come back. So we already copied seventeen um, ten to our company. So one is a definition, and is the copying the seventeen ten to our company code. Okay. That's it. Only two activities we do that. Rest create control business functional. Don't worry about that because it automatically comes because when you copy seventeen ten. Okay. Next. And the controlling we are not doing anything control part. Okay. So ignore the control part. And the next one is the logistic general. Under the logistic general, so. the valuation is important whether the valuation at the company level or plant level you know that in any if you have a parts in your company or products in a company or manufacture in some product you should evaluate them right what level you want to evaluate you want to evaluate at the plant level if you manufacture within the plant can we evaluate it there or at the you want to be at a company level we have a two provisions but this is the settings done by fy guys when you start the real time project let's see in a 1710 valuation level what level we have so when you when when they decided the insel stays while creating company company code the finance guys they realized that the valuation should be at the plant location rather than at company code so the best practice system 
they said is if you want to value the product so it is be based on the plant rather than the company code so this is the very highest level decided by the finance guys so even best practice system they put plant plant in a real time majority time is a plant plant level only unless otherwise you know some business requirement they want to go for any valuation at the company code okay so these are the default so you need not worry just to know what is the valuation okay so is already there so you need not do anything so now you are going to define copy and check plant just see that you know what are the defined plant see you can always even copy also if you want to you can always copy the plants see you can define it for example just i selected this one as you know that plants is also 17 plants we have okay so you also copy plants to 5710 remember whatever plants we have 1710 i'm asking to copy to plant 5710 so he is use as much as possible best practice system to copy that okay just i'm copying now copy this do you want really uh, transport number ranges you say no okay so you are you are transferring whatever plants in 1710 same thing you are transferring here okay copy this so our plant is 5710 make it as a, as a best practice am i right make it same plant name uh, company code same number that is the best practice always okay see so you already copied now okay you can always see whether you is your plant is there or not see now if you go back see how i can search because i have so many things here can i search easily See, use the position. You can always search five seven one zero your plant. Okay, so your plant. You can always see this one. So see, because I copied it, so many information. You know, I need not to enter manually. So look at this. So much information: reason, country, currency, calendar, under tax deduction for that uh, California area tax deduction. Factory calendar is also important. so all this information you know i can avoid like entering it so you can also do that so now uh, what i can say the plant one in us uh, you can say just i can put a sg corp okay because our sg corp just for to make sure that um, it's a mine only okay okay just i'm trying to add that okay this one So our ASG corp, as plant one, yes, ASG corp. Next, that's it. Only you already defined our plant is. We have created as of now only one plant. Don't worry, we can create one more plant later, or if you want, you can create now one. It's all up to you. Okay. As of now, I created only one plant. For example, you want to do stock transfer or derm, right? One plant to another plant. That time you need one more plant. Okay. so okay we will create right away one more plant okay uh, maybe i need to create a different country different location okay just we will we'll create one more plant now copy this one same thing 1710 only like copy it and uh, now instead of uh, 5710 we can say 5711 okay because i want to use the same name 10 is a base loki base plant and another loki another plant 5711 okay but we are not going we are not going to use this plant at the moment but we are keeping a backup plan so that when we do any stock transfer order anything that time we will initiate this plant but as of now i'm creating one more plant safer side okay Okay. you already copied another plant okay come back so we have created two plants now okay if you see this one define plant so you already created um, two plants we have created 57 5710 and 571 so what we will do is this one 
uh, we will always you know discipline we can modify it everything if you want to we can modify you can always modify later as of now i created two plants at the same location but suddenly i can change it everything at us but don't worry at the moment and we have one more uh, this is the plant too okay i am going to put a plant too but this plant too is a sg corp but different location okay i will update address later okay you can update the address yes i did okay yes sir then next once you create a plan and also division important in terms of sales you know we need this division okay i can create one division for in terms of sales we need a division is a, a is a mandatory um, parameter without this uh, division we cannot do anything okay as i said always you know you can 17 10 means 17 is there it's not there okay that's fine anything okay. just i copy this one so as we said is uh, our c is 57 because uh, is a division. so i i use the first two terms okay so that you know you, you can always uh, this way so 57 is a sales group okay sales division say with this one as a division okay because since it start for 574 digit code right i used to two digits to create a division so that i can i can remember all the time these things okay so division also we create under the logistics plant and division and then we will move it into sales organ sales and distribution so he is asking define copy sales organization okay we will create a sales organization okay define this one okay um i just said like you know i can always say any sales organization just uh, even 1710 is also there you can always if you want you can create it okay 1710 and then what you have to do is put a 5710 if you want to put a same organize sales organization and uh, okay that is 5710 okay sales org this is for sg corp right so just always i'm adding sg corp so make sure that it is ours belongs to me sg yeah okay is a start that's it only 5710 is enough if you want to use same uh, this one or if you want to be even distinguish uh, very clear you can put sales group also you can say sales wo also you can use it 57 is okay is up to you how you want it okay but 572 digit code is always uh, see i'm not at all using anything because i use it so i can always use the same thing now our sales organization is this one is 5710 put our okay, 57 and this one is a company and is find this is the sg corp naidu you made it as a 57 so dot 5710 say okay, it's fine yeah this is a company always i add the company here okay oh okay okay always okay. company means you can this No, no, just for the consistency you talked about. Yeah, so that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. found you can use, but if don't want, then we can go for five seven one zero. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So one sales organizes more than enough. So we don't need to. So for every time, you know, you are saving the transport, your own transport. Okay. Next, and also we need one distribution channel, and. Uh, so we create one distribution channel okay okay so this distribution channel means how you are going to distribute your parts whether it retail one you know the distribution is whether it will be you manufacture it you sell it or somebody will manufacture it you get it you sell it like retail kind of business you know that is called distribution channel how you distribute your parts that's where is the distribution is important in terms of the sales terminology so distribution you can always copy the one and we will also go 57 of the distribution channel then i will use um, a dc distribution quickly in you know, a 5710 okay just enter it and save it 57 our distribution channel next 
you are defined it. You can define copy also on the maintain sales office. And also you also maintain sales office. Uh, you have a sales number, right? Also you just can always copy this one, copy and put into our 570, okay? Our 570 sales office. And automatically who is created comes once I update this one. So the sales office in the 5710. See, that's what your effort is very less if you are doing this job, okay? So rest you keep same thing address only. It is, is will save a lot of time. I think is five digit code, right? Sorry. I think it's a four digit. I will go for four digit. Sorry. Anything I can go for that. Okay. Five seven sales office and To you copy that. So we'll do the same thing, sales office. Copy it. And the sales group, we'll create one sales group. And uh, it's also the same thing, 1710. Copy this one. And uh, this is also, I think this is a three digit code. So we will go for 5770. This is sales group. So like purchase group of it will be same thing is also sales group, sales org, sales group. So no, sales done. Same thing material, we see this all sales related and the material management guys, they will do for all these things. See? Um, maintain storage locations, okay. So you know that our plant is 5710. We, we will see anything is there in this. one. See, since we already copied, 1710 we copied him right you have received everything here so you got winter 1710 but as i said we don't want all these things with the 1710 what you can do you can always select this one okay use this existing one whatever something we have you know but we don't need all but whatever we need we can use it okay so okay you copy all these things see just to use a copy as, okay, copy as. We can change our name, copy as, and just change it to our 57, okay? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. You can control and see, you can use it, but sometimes you know, just you can, you will maintain same uh, uh, different uh, storage locations. You know that plant we have created them, right? Under that, we can create how many storage locations you want, so you can create it. But the only thing is, you need to tell the system like which storage locations, IM based storage locations, which storage locations is for EWM storage locations, okay? I will tell you what we are going to use it, okay? Remember, I am going to use this one, 571D, that is called receiving on dock. That means when you receive the goods, that entire area, I can categorize as a 57D, one storage location. I will map it that. I will tell you how to map it. And also, once you put into final bins, then remaining, you know, remaining area, then I, I will I will categorize it as a 57 yes that is called available available for sale so our entire warehouse is a divided into two storage location approach one is when you receive the product until you put away then the parts or belongs to the 571d receiving and down the moment you put into the bin the stock will belongs to the 57 yes that is called available for sale okay these these two are i'm what i'm going to do this receiving and dock available for sale even returns we may use it feature but these three 
I'm going to use for the EWM warehouse managed storage location. Remaining location, for example, 578A, B, C, all these things I use, I call as a inventory based storage location. For example, you have a warehouse. As I said, two already you have two storage locations occupied, EWM based. Remaining storage location, you can keep some parts outside the warehouse or some other location, some other um, area, some other um, district or any place, you know. So if you want to get it from IM based location to the EWM location, then it will help us like how we can move stocks from IM based location to EWM location, from EWM location to IM based location for internal transfer or stock transfer. So I will, within the plant, within the storage location, we can move uh, bit, uh, um, within the plant, between the two storage location, how we can move the stock. What happen if it is a, within the IM based location? What happen is outside IM based location? Okay, so I copy it now, just to save it. Copy all. Copy one second. Mr. Naido, all. quick question. Is there any specific reason on the um, separation of storage locations for receiving versus actual storage or is it just for uh, educational purpose you're showing? Here? No, no, it's not educational purpose. See, what happened is, if you, it's in a real time, am I right? So you want to um, capture every moment of the product. You want to understand like, you know, so fine detail. What happened if I have a one storage location approach? I don't know where my stock, the stock source, everything, one storage location. The receiving stock source in the same location, even available for sale also saying same location. How I can distinguish this stock, what stock this belongs to me. For me, it's a missing the visibility. So for better understanding, for best practices, if any warehouse, if you maintain two storage location approach, you know that, okay, as a, as a warehouse man, I want to see that, okay, how much I received today. So based on this storage, look, I, based on this approach, I can see I received this much. And uh, okay. for example, yeah, inventory guy, see, remember inventory guy, you never see the warehouse. He sits somewhere else, say, purchasing guy, they are anybody. And also a sales guy, he sits somewhere else. He never even see the warehouse, but how they want to see, visualize the stock. If a sales guy, I want to see how much stock is available for me sale. Then you need separate storage location. Then only you can see in a IM side. Okay. But Same that thing, visibility but, isn't it at the warehouse level? I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand. The... Yeah. Yeah, that's what, you know, very, very important. Just I will draw this one. Okay. Okay. This one, our entire warehouse, as I said, like we have a doors. Okay. We have a staging area staging area and these are the doors and then you know that finally you put the racks assume that simple way okay finally put the racks so you receive the goods here and uh, you will move it here so what i'm trying to say is like if this one this yellow line i will treat this location as a 57d 571d as a receiving and down so this entire area, I treat as a 570. I will map it. So remember, these are all IM-based storage locations. I need to map this storage location to EWM. EWM, you never call as a storage locations. You call as a availability group. Okay, you call as availability group. So this entire, this storage location, I will map as a availability group 01. And there is a stock type is a F1 stock, is a restricted stock, unrestricted stock. So I will, IM based location is mapped into EWM availability group. So this any part, if I, if I stand here or here or anything, I will understand that these parts belongs to availability group 01, that is called F1 stock, that in turn, it belongs to 571D, okay? As soon as soon as you move these goods to confirm it, this stock, whatever this high rack stacks, this racks, assume that this stock, I what I will do, this entire other location, I will map as a 571. Yes. That means as soon as you confirm into final racks, the stock change will happen. 
as i said f1 stock to f2 stock that means in a ewm term 571s in a im wise people will understand 57s location but ewm wise we can call as a availability group 02 so we jumped so quickly but i'm just since you ask me availability group 02 yeah now i now i understand yeah that's that, right. thanks i that think we'll we'll touch this later yeah. stock see remember yeah, if i use one storage location how i can distinguish how much stock i received it how much stock is available for me sale this is the reason you know me two based approach is a very good to track moments remember within 570 i can say that 570d it says particular material quantity 100 okay who only tells that this in im side you know inventory guy he sits and he sees okay stock using mmbe or M using mmbe there is transaction or mb52 mb52 what he will do he will check he will check some x component see that 100 quantity that's all you see 100 quantity this location but ewm side i can see the stock is at the door the stock is at staging area the stock is a deconsolidation area the stock is a quality area the stock is any blocked state so so means i can precisely i can see that see im is just gives you number that's what i said right im based location gives you only the number and the value but whereas this one i can get the 100 quantity 100 quantity maybe is a door level 100 quantity is lying at the staging area 100 quantity deconsolidation but i can get the quantity exact location exact location exact means that precision location that is the beauty of ewm see within this location i can tell the system saying that the stock is not moved the stock is lying here the stock is not unloaded here says the 100 quantity but stock is not unloaded so that is there and i can capture the moments within the warehouse i can capture where this product is lying okay hope you can but i'm going to explain more detail this one but since you asked me up front but i'm explaining this one okay you know okay, that why you. we have two stories that approach we are going here okay you you know intro say that you capture the every moment if it's a single story location is a very diff difficult to distinguish what kind of stock it is um whether this stock is a receiving receiving stock or whether it is available for sale what kind of stock type whether it is restricted unrestricted so that way to because as a warehouse you want to capture every moment am right you want to know so precise details that is the very two based approach is um, best approach you know to adapt any warehouses any complex warehouse to to two based one for example as i said return am right if i want to add return then any return component then i will uh, one more story the location see anything for example uh, if you send a customer customer send it back to us so when you receive the product for example then then i will put additional place here then this one i will map into this location one more is 571n return area return apart from this and this then i can do it or you don't want to separate uh, the storage location then i will go for uh, i will always include within this 57d only even return stock also it's all business you know how they want it you always discuss am right how what is the as is business how they want to map it like you know you can always suggest it and uh, what is the best solutions for them okay so i copy it now i save it just save it and um, make sure you go back and uh, delete a previous one because we don't need this one 171 all these things okay try to delete it all 171s even one eight, i don't need this okay so i'm going to delete this one because which way done to all entries yes. okay so only i need what i need so as i said i am going to use seven five seven one d and i'm going to use for five seven yes d and yes remember in the real time also same terminal as they use it receiving mean d and yes d and yes real time also okay let's save it you come back now okay and also now you have to create a purchasing organization okay 
as i said you know 1710 is there always you know copy 1710 for this organization what is a 5710 5710 or you want to put a 5710 even purchasing organization if you want to use purchasing organization this is up to your wish you know so there is no mandatory you know i wanted like that okay i can put a 5710 uh, i mean that way is a purchasing or is already there okay just see shiver waste you know okay. so if you have created here yeah, five seven um yes wall sales also same way so five and purchasing organization or as, as else you can use same number whoever you want to you can do that there is no uh thumb rule you know but maintain the number you know that's good practice under logistic execution okay now we have to create a dummy warehouse as we discussed them right in a flow now we have created company code plants storage locations now what is left now we have to create a dummy warehouse see if you want to interface between the s4 system ewm system you should maintain dummy warehouse as i said dummy warehouse three digit code without dummy warehouse you cannot connect s4 system to ewm system this is a four digit one okay first we are creating dummy warehouse under the logistics side so now so under the logistic execution see i'm going one by one when i'm not all jumping in it so company warehouse define warehouse number you can always if you want you can always copy 1710 as i said this is a three digit code so 5710 so as i said ewm cross industries sg corp and uh, sg okay that's fine you can put anything you know just, this is just in you know, a name you know nothing is no address nothing just a three digit definition you can say nothing is there no information just you have to define it and save under the see every time you know whenever you create you are going to save under same over a company transport one company transport could use it so now we have created dummy warehouse number that is called same thing 571 is a, a, a cross industry sg okay so that next shipping point is important remember what is the important shipping point if you want to receive the product if you want to deliver the product you should have a shipping point this shipping point directly linked with the plant so once you define this plant should assign to the plant then only this meaning comes otherwise you know there is no meaning for shipping point so shipping point is a point where you receive the goods or you send the goods from the shipping point that is the shipping point okay first define the shipping point so you can use all the 1710 if you want or else you know i can uh, best way as i said like use 5710 or like you know 57 shipping point okay this one is 5710 so you keep as it is you know everything you know just save it so our shipping point is 571 and also is coming address shipping point is a address without this address you know nothing would happen see any shipping point it is a See, as, as, as just now we have seen warehouse, when you create a dummy warehouse, there is no address for that. But shipping point is having address. Because the shipping point where you are going to receive the product and deliver the product. So shipping coin tells that where this product to receive it, where should product uh, you deliver it from the shipping point. So shipping point is address. You know that that address belongs to what? Okay. So SG Corp. So you have one shipping point you created. Enough one shipping point more than enough. You don't need. You can real time. You know, you, you may create several shipping points. Maybe five depends on the business requirement. But one shipping point is more than enough. But real time maybe require three, four. If depends on if a business says okay, we we don't want to use for uh, receiving and you know shipping. You may use different one. So appropriately you can use it. Okay, but one is more than enough to use. We don't need loading point transportation. Okay, warehouse number and checkpoint. Now you have everything you have done. Definition wise, you have completed successfully. Okay, you have created a company code. Just I will repeat. You define a company, 
your company code you created you have created even uh, um sales organ structure purchasing organ structure plants you have created storage locations you have created dummy warehouse number you have created shipping point you have created now we have to assignment how you are going to link it one by one so the next task is assignment under that we will go one by line by line so that you can create the organ structure okay. financial accounting see you need to do only one item you don't need to do all these things only company code to company that's enough okay first assign company code to company what is our company code 5710 and you need to assign our company our company is see 5710 company okay just assign this one so you are assigning your company to the company code as i said company code is a legal entity just every time see you are saving same request make sure that you save your own so whatever description you create you know make sure you are using all the time you were saying saving one request so that you know you should not uh, save your your configuration somebody other somebody company name or somebody request okay so that you can remember also in a real time am right you can you can create different different transports for the company organ structure for ewm different Uh, that, that, that's also possible but now i'm um, since is you now is training you you store everything once on transport okay so we have assigned now and controlling also one more parameter is there uh, controlling we don't need any company code controlling just we'll we will make sure that whether controlling is assigned or not okay definitely it should be assigned okay for example you know that as i said company when you copy you have seen controlling area this is a standard one just to select this one make sure your your company code already assigned to this one okay because without this controlling area you cannot do anything so make sure that your company is under this one see is all that is there 5710 company code is already there don't worry i will will change this name okay but 5711 is already there so our con even controlling age is already assigned to our company code so no issue at all just you check it make sure that you assign for that and nothing to do with this one is okay next logistic general see now plant you have to assign to plant to the company code okay now you are going to assign plant to company code so looks like somebody has done it blocked okay so if you get like this one what you have to do is you copy this person number copy this person number and then open another screen and there is a transaction is called sm tool okay sm tool put a sm tool plug in this number back to that person okay just run it or you can search it you get like this because he is also working same time with us so what you can do select this one you tell that delete this one so that you are deleting this person to work that okay temporarily okay so that it allows you to do your job now i am going back there and assign plan to company code okay sm12 don't worry sm12 note down so next what you can do now 5710 right so now i am going to create a new entries don't worry So what is asking company code? Our company code five seven. See if you put a five only automatically comes here. So five seven one zero. What is your plan? Your plan is five seven. Just you put a five seven, then it comes. See you have a two plan five seven one zero, and another plan you can also put here five seven one zero and five seven. Anyway, as I said, you know another plan I am not at all using much, but still I created two plans for this purpose. is already assigned to like that oh, since we copied it should be there i think so that's fine see in case if is already there you check it your plan okay 5710 in case if is there or not it is there it's not at all there okay mm, okay you see this, this is see when you copy it is coming here now so don't worry what we can do is you can always delete it because both uh, it is coming in 1710 why is coming this one i don't know why okay. 
before deleting make sure that you know 1710 is the original one okay i don't want to delete simply straight away so make sure that not to touch 1710 one okay delete this one yes just you delete it now create a new entries select your 5710 and same thing 5710 same thing same come 5710 for company code and for one more plant 57 one more 11 one more plant okay, this plant as of no sleeping plant they are not doing anything okay just we'll come back okay so you have done it for the assignment see our company our company you assign to our plant next so next you know business this is only only company code under the logistics next sales sales is too many things but we have to create so you have to assign sales organized to company code sales org to company code okay so you may, you just see whether you have already sales organization you know see it is already there find the seven thing that only thing is you need to assign your company code 570 See why I'm going, you know, since I made a proper name, you know, I'm, I need not to search every time because I know that what I'm going to do that. So that's why this naming conventions also make it as realistic as possible, okay? So that in real time, you won't see any much difference. Okay, 5750. Yes, so you assign a sales organization to your company code. Next, assign distribution channel to sales organization. I don't think so. We have our uh, sales org uh, 57 years so We can always check in you know, MPC there. So nothing is there. So what you can do, new entry, just you select whatever. See, 57, you know, I can select. I need not to enter everything, just two digit enough. And the distribution channel also, I created as a 57 only. See, 57. Just save it. So you assigned your channel to your sales organization. And assign division to sales organization. Okay. And you can go for always uh, go for new one. Five seven. Sorry, five seven. And division. As I said, division also we created them, right? I, I believe it's a five seven as division. See, our five seven is our sales division. Is it? If you start one. Oh, sorry. You also make sure that you know you follow some convention, whatever your convention, just you set, plan accordingly. Even set up sales area. Okay. Sales area means what? The combination of the sales arc, distribution channel, and division is called a sales arc. Okay. That is what okay. Sales area means the combination of all three areas. New entry. Whatever five seven. And this is a one-time job, so you may not do off. Uh, once you set up this one, we may not come and see also. So this is a one-time job. Without this data, we cannot do anything. Save it now. So you created sales area now. Let's take more time. And assign sales office to sales area. Okay. This also new entry. Make sure every entry, you know, you enter from the new entries, 570, distribution channel, and the division, and the sales office. So our sales office also, 5706. So just save it. The combination, you know, it comes under as a Sales office to sales area. Next, sales group to sales office. Okay, now group to sales office. Okay, here also new entry for sales office. Start five seven. Then you get that for sales office, and the sales group start with five seven. It gives the for sales group five seven. The sales group. Okay, that is three digit code. Okay, 
the sales work is done now. Last one, and one more is, and assign, see overall you have to, though you assigned a company code, sales org, finally your org should be your plant. Again, you have to link your sales organized to plant. How you have done it for the purchasing organization to plant, same way sales organization you should assign to the plant. Okay, assign sales org to distribution channel and plant. So last one, then we can see sales org 57 and sales org and the distribution channel just a put a 57 it comes that and the plant ours is 57 I mean 5710 even you can always select 5710 see you have a two plants but this one we are not using but 5710 is the our effective plant at the moment okay so you assigned sales org distribution channel and your plant so you have linked everything to the plant and also you link to the company code don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos no. business account we don't need close the sales page then next one we will move to the material management is asking see purchasing organized to company code how you assign sales are to company code and a sales are good to the plant same thing again materials i mean metal management side you need to do that so, so make sure we, whether we have um, 570 see already there our purchasing organization 5710 so your company code should assign for that select your company code so you not do that that's what i said you, know, you can enter it two digit that's enough so you assigned your company code to your purchasing organization 5710 but see in real time do you think one purchasing organization? Maybe maybe at the five purchasing or two purchasing or the organization. Depends on the volume of the company, you know, whether they want to be a single purchasing group or different group. It's all depends on the business. But we are going with only one purchasing organization for entire company. And the purchasing organized to plant. Okay. Whether we'll see any of our purchasing organization, five, seven. Yes, we'll see five, seven and up. Nothing is there. Okay, put a new entry. Our purchasing arc 57, purchasing arc, and our plant is 5710. And, and as I said, even I can assign our five a purchasing organization to another plant also, 5711. That means, see, you can, you can imagine now, I can assign one purchasing arc for several plants also. That's also possible. See, one purchasing organization, I can assign several plants. Okay, just I assign for that, but 5710. And the next one is, this standard one is don't worry, we don't need this, these two, okay? Only these two is important, these two we don't need, okay? Purchasing org to company code and org to plant. And the next one is the logistic execution. See, if you, if you look at the definition, the same way how you defined exactly same format, even assignment also. There is nothing different. Same uh, hierarchy is there, finance, controlling, say logistic general, same way is there. So now logistic execution. So all dummy warehouse you have created, am I right? Where it comes under dummy warehouse, it comes under logistic only. See, it's a dummy warehouse and a, a shipping point. Everything it comes to logistics. Same thing, even uh, uh, here also assignment also, it comes on logistics. Now we need to assign your dummy warehouse, three digit code dummy warehouse to plant and storage location. Now here you need to tell that whether your dummy warehouse is a two based storage location or one based storage location or like that. So I'm going to new entries, select your plant, Five seven one zero. Okay. He also, as I said, Emirate five seven uh, receiving and dock. T means D is the EWM receiving and dock. This is EWM based one. And also, you need to tell your dummy warehouse. Your dummy warehouse is five seven one. You want you can select always. Okay. See 
all dummy were a three digit number ours is ewm uh, cross industry sg repeat for same thing 5710 same plant and uh, one more storage location 571 yes as i said yes means 571 yes okay that is for available for sale so i am dividing my warehouse into two storage location of course 571 hope i have i've already explained that but we will discuss more on that okay okay this is the two storage location approach okay and quickly you wanted just you know i will give uh, that as so quickly this so as we discuss this is a one and this is the another one so anything we receive it oh, sorry it's gone it looks like it's gone okay i will do this okay as we discuss anything as i said you know anything you receive it inbound side any inbound side before put into final racks this one i will assign as a 571d and this one i will this one i will assign to 571 yes okay this location receiving and dock anything d means receiving and dock anything yes means available for sale but in a gwm side you never discuss about this storage location you never discuss storage location you because you think that this is availability group what you do is you will map it all these storage location to ewm storage locations that is called availability group okay we will see how we can linkage im based storage location to ewm storage locations in ewm but entire warehouse we have divided into store storage location that's what i want to say now save it next one is as i said am i right you need to assign shipping point to plant the shipping point where you ship it this is the goods this is the final one we have to assign it because since is so much so many thing is there difficult what you can do you can always search the your point 5710 just search it see whether it is there exist yeah we have our see it is already there select it see this one under this one what you need to maybe it is coming when you copy it everything is coming what what you need is Here is our shipping point. Uh, it is not assigned. You have to assign, right? We are in assignment. Yeah, the, but our shipping it's point should be here, am I right? Scroll down. You see it still. It we saw in the bottom. Keep oh, going. Saying... Yeah. Five seven one one. No no no. Shipping no, point. No, you have to assign. Uh, Naidu, you have to assign it. Okay, one second. We, see, I select the plant now. Select this plant. See, it, it is highlighted now. The red red box, like in a rectangular box. Assign it. Then you. To make an assignment, must select object. Let's see. No, you have to. You have one to click on that X. X yeah, yeah. Same plant. Yeah. 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 This plant. You select this one. Assign it to this one. Okay. Now. You you need to select your shipping point, okay? Five seven SP. Yeah. Okay. Select this one, assign it, then flag it. Then you know you can assign it. So now it is going to come under that. Yeah. So if you look at now, so five seven one zero under that our um, shipping point is this one. Okay. Five seven SP. Okay. Just save it. Okay. You know that am I right? You need to select it, assign it. then you will pop up with window is comes maybe i can show that pop up window comes then where you need to select your shipping point then you flag this one then you say this one okay yeah so i did the job is got now maybe you want to unassign those which are not needed uh, yeah, yeah yeah we can leave it at the moment but certainly we can do it but uh, yeah we can see don't the want like you know you can always you know, shipping point yeah yeah, yeah. You, you can delete it also if you don't want also can but You know, because this is time bound, right? So you know, we don't want a list of users. Okay? So, so almost we have done the entire organized structure. In a S four side organized structure, we have done it. 
that means i is one time but see all we we have uh, we have created now so company code plant we have done two plants and we also created several storage locations we have created dummy and also we link as a company code to plant and plant storage locations and also uh, two storage locations and one plant to dummy warehouse that's all we have done it and also we have created a purchasing organization under the purchasing organization you assign to the plant and also you created sales organization sales office so much you have done it so this way the organizational structure for yes for ana we have done it what we have to do now is still we have 30 minutes time is left uh, we will jump into questions after 20 minutes maybe we will create at least i want to enter ewm side so i create one uh, ewm side you know what are the things you know at least 2 minutes i will work on that 2 to 3 minutes okay so that you know we so this is done almost done now so now, now we are going to move into ewm side what are the things in ewm side you need to create it first you know to establish one you need to create ewm warehouse i just said this is no address ewm is there is no address how i can give address by creating a supply chain unit and also you want to create a warehouse number you should have a custodian is required without custodian you cannot create a ewm warehouse number so you need to create a custodian you need to create a supply chain okay to create a custodian we use a transaction called bp business partner that is called bp is a transaction in a s4 system we use to create any person whether within the organization whether any individual people or or banker or finance anybody any individual even employee in a s4 system we call as a business partner whether he is a customer whether he is a vendor whether he is a blank officer or whether it is a, our um, employee everybody we will be called as a business partner okay but in a ecc except srm and crm the two models where we have a business partner concept it was there is not a new concept in s4 it was already there the problem is if you create an um, a vendor uh, is not a business partner is a vendor only in a ecc one if you create a customer is still is a customer only so how the system knows how you need to convert customer and business partner if you want to uh, if you want to um, collaborate with crm and srm in ecc though then you have to convert is that such kind of problem is not at all there in a s4 system because s4 system is everything you define the day one as a business partner only whether you create a vendor is also business partner when you are creating a customer is also business partner when is a custodian is a owner default party until he is also a business partner so using single transaction with a different rules business partner also we have a several roles different roles you can you can identify that whether he is a customer whether he is a custodian whether he is a vendor so on so on. okay using this customer we can create and also how to create a supply chain to create a supply chain we have a transaction called slash n slash n means new screen always remember slash n means new screen slash scwm because that's where we are working now scwm is supply chain warehouse management scwm see for all our ewm transactions starts with scwm scwm is a starting our transactions slash n means a new screen scwm slash sorry scmb to create a supply chain scmb i remember it okay so, slash mb and scu main scu supply chain main okay supply chain main maybe i will type it somewhere that's good okay slash n scmb scu main transaction to create a supply chain unit okay then i will uh, navigate into sap where we are going to move now okay see now you know organized structure you know and enterprise structure under that definition you have done it now that's wonderful now so next i will move it into our ewm side so when you see here exactly this is the work okay is a more or less in you know, uh, always in you know, instead of navigate you think that definitely will be somewhere center place our ewm okay so this one so under the ecm 
and you know several models also there because we are not working all these things so even financial accounting so many things logistic general we may use sometimes and even so sales and product distribution even material management we may use sometimes some other thing for documents and also but our focus is more on scm extended warehouse management so under the logistic execution even we may use logistic execution also okay i will jump into ecm extended warehouse management okay so under this one see ecm i i will explain when to use scm base all this thing first we will always work on this one scm extended warehouse management this is the node so i don't know some people will already worked on sap so they do so we call as a node okay node so under the scm extended warehouse node and under that uh, sub node extended warehouse management there we can see this master data goods receipt see under the master major master data what are the edw master data what are the goods receipt related process goods issue any internal process we have we have discussed them right we have all the time three processes goods receipt goods issue internal process same thing here also so anything goods receipt means you are receiving thing all related goods receipt process no we can go through this all goods issue related thing then you go through the goods issue any internal then for example replenishment physical inventory all these things we discuss internal other than this one we have a cross process settings cross process settings means how you wanted um, uh, handling in its so warehouse order warehouse tasks and uh, um, uh, movements you know when you move the product handling in it one location to other location how do you call it how do you do that okay what is called that one in a in a, a inventory management we call it the movements if you receive the product you call it the one at one goods receiving if you if you sell if you if you send it to customer you say the to 201 is the goods issue similarly there is a movements also here but instead of calling as a movements we call as a warehouse process type anyway we will discuss more on that okay material flow system we are not going to work this mf1 so just i will tell you what are the what are the models we work here master data we exchange will work we work goods receipt we work goods issue process we work internal process we work cross process settings have definite and we may not we may not work on material flow system labor management billing dock appointment scheduling and definitely we will use it we will go for monitoring definitely because we were most excited to see monitoring how to uh, how to copy you know how you manage it modify and you know for any based on business requirement definitely interfaces require that's where we how to make a establish the relation between the s4 system to wm interfaces definitely we are also interested in mobile data that means rf devices how we can uh, uh, how we can use existing um, rf device how we can announce the rf devices all these things is a bad is also business bad is okay these things we use it but whatever cross mark we are not doing whatever highlighted in the tick mark we work on that and also we work in scm basis i will tell you when to use it. scm basis majority we use for the vas products for the cross docking products where we have to create product group and product group type then only system knows that you know what product it should undergo value added service what product should undergo cross docking based on the scm basis under the master data you need to tell the system saying that okay this particular product is belongs to the vas so the where you create um, uh, some parameters don't worry too much about it, but scm basis we use it for certain products so now as we discussed them right our flow chart shows this one we are going to create a dummy warehouse so the time is also running but we will see whether we can create our dummy where uh, our real warehouse number here okay so under the master data first define a warehouse number okay first you need to define warehouse number see when you select master data you have a define warehouse number assign warehouse number controls and there are like you know number ranges how to define storage types sections and how to create a bins how to create staging areas doors shipping and receiving activity areas what is mean work center we said right any work center we do 
packing, repacking, value added service, all these things. And uh, all packed products, packaging specification, and Hajarad, anything production, Hajarad substance. But I don't know, Hajarad substance, we work it, but majority we work all these things in a warehouse, this one controls and at number ranges, all these sections, groups, and bins, and the doors, the activity as work centers, package specs, all this we work. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. First, this one, this master data comes. And under goods receipt, you see strategies. We discussed them, right? How the system knows that which product is going to uh, go designated places by going for strategies. So we have uh, some strategies, you know, storage type strategies, suction strategies, so on. So on. And the slotting, we'll discuss later. Deconsolidates. And what inbound delivery? See, how the document types, how you are going to manage the document types such a way that when you receive the delivery, this delivery belongs to the inbound delivery. Within inbound delivery, whether it is a vendor, uh, when the, uh, you received from the supplier, or you received from a, a customer return one, or like in you know, a manufacturing one, or like in you know, a several order, or stock transfer order, so on. So, so using these uh, documents, you know, document type and item types, where you map it such a way that system knows that what kind of deliveries uh, this one within the inbound delivery zone. And uh, similarly, goods receipt for this is a decentralized one. Ignore that. I know that some of the people exactly say, even if you want to enable decentralize, there is option to enable. So you can always, you know, in front of node, we have a, some um, binoculars, you can always go through more detailed information before this one. So there's so much data is there. You can always go through that before enabling the decentralized. See what are the options they're saying. See that they're discussed about deployment options. Okay. What is the decision and embedded decision? So all these things, you, know, you can always see. Decentralized means stock for this warehouse does not have a MMI stock management. Okay, we will discuss more, but just I'm telling you, know, just if you want more, you can always check this one. Even master data. See, even what is mean of warehouse number? You can always go through this one. Make sure that, okay, you can always, you know, go through this one if it's memorialized. If you're trying to make a document, you know, you can always define warehouse number. You write it the same matter so that you know that what you mean warehouse. I just said, Warehouse number is a description, does not have any address. That's what we do. So you can always go through more detail if you like it, okay? these things. You can always do that. So now to define warehouse number. Or you want to just two minutes, two more minutes, I'll go through. And anything goods issue, right? Say so goods also like strategies. How the system knows which products is lying in which location. When you get the order, how I need to pick it. How the system is going to tell for the warehouse clerk or warehouse operator. So using the strategies. So we have a stock removal strategies. Like how we put away strategies, we have stock removal strategies. Cartonizing planning, we are not going to work, but cartonizing planning, it suggests to you what kind of a packaging specs, what kind of packaging required based on the order. Length and weight and all, whether it is small package required, large package required, medium package required. This is a cartonizing. And also wave management. Definitely we will work on wave management a lot. What is the wave management? What is the importance of wave management? How you can optimize your warehouse orders? How you can improve the picking efficiency so that you can deliver it to um, customer you know, in a time manner, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, within time limits. And what do we pick denial? We will also discuss pick denial. Pick denial in the layman term. Assume that you got an order, the person goes to the respective bin, you wanted 100 quantity, but it is there only 90 quantity. Then what happened 10 quantity, then you cannot do that. What he can do is, whereas clerk, you will click the pick denial, then system creates a replenishment, system create a physical inventory, saying that can anybody to replenish the stock from reserve area to this bin, and also saying that can any inventory guy come and check why stock is lying only 90, those systems source 100. Okay, that's what Pig Daniel will discuss. Work center, as you know, work center means is a place, is a, is a area where you work it, all the activities, repacking, packing, and the labeling, and uh, the, printing the labels, so on so activities, when printing the labels, printing the 
um, um, product list, address labels. So all these activities can be performed at the work center. Don't think work center is only packing area. Work center can be deconsolidation. Work center can be value added area. Work center can be packing area. Work center can be even scrapping area. Work center can be even quality work area. Work center can be um, uh, even when the customer return area or um, um, vendor return area. Anything, you know, the location where you are trying to do certain activities is called a work center. But in a warehouse, where we can use work center and where we are not use work center, that's all we will discuss. Okay, so these are the numbers and cancel picking, how to cancel the pick the deliveries and also next outbound deliveries. How, you, how, how do you know that? What kind of outbound delivery? There are several deliveries in a real time. You are talking about just outbound delivery, standard deliveries, out, um, rush deliveries, and stock transfer deliveries, and vendor return deliveries. So like that, you know, um, even cross docking. You have seen a cross docking. The product comes and it goes. Even cross docking also comes under because it comes and it goes. So it creates inbound delivery and at the same time outbound delivery. So how do how system knows that? which document belongs to which, so that he can distinguish what kind of outbound delivery it is. Outbound delivery. And the next one is internal, uh, internal warehouse. So uh, internal warehouse, as we discussed them, right? Replenishment is also re internal process. As I said, in a layman term, just I'm going to draw this one. I know that somehow thing I missed it yesterday. So this is the reserve area. That means you, you keep major stock here. But we have one more uh, um, racks. This is the, because this is the easy for you. Maybe you can say fast moving goods. So this one. So warehouse clerk, he comes and picks the goods here. Okay, majority time. He comes and uh, picks the goods here. Okay, all that time. This is the reserve area, reserve bins. This is the main bins. Assume that main rack bins. So where, you know, operator comes and picks. What happens is, if stock is, uh, certain level. Assume that you maintain stock minimum is 10 quantity, maximum is 100. What happens is when a stock falls below 10, what happens? Stock falls below. So in a in a layman term, what you will go in a physical? If you see, hey, well, come on, if the stock is only 10, uh, what you will do? You will bring it and you will keep it. It's a layman term. Just you go there and bring it. Okay. Is it possible for us in a real time? As I said, in a real time, minimum. As I said, my work current work. 70,000 bins are okay, My volume of bins is more than 70,000 bins. Is it possible for me to fill the things one by one? It's an impossible task for me. Okay, what I do, using the replenishment, such a way that I maintain the product, minimum and maximum stock, system below the, as soon as the stock falls below a threshold limit, maybe 10 means below the 10, system triggers automatically replenishment warehouse task. So based on this one, the warehouse clerk, there is a dedicated people, they will fill the goods from reserve area to the main bins. That is called replenishment. We will discuss more replenishment. What do you mean plant replenishment? There are several options we have. Automatic replenishment, we'll discuss later. But in a layman term, this is what replenishment. When we have to use replenishment, what level, whether you want to, ad hoc base, you want to do replenishment or you want to automatic replenishment or planned replenishment, that's we will discuss, okay? So all the replenishment. And the warehouse optimization, we'll discuss. And the physical inventory, as I said, physical inventory, same thing uh, in a real time, so I removed it. In a real time, okay? Our monitor says, SAP monitor says, the quantity here is, 150, this bin. But when a warehouse clerk, when you raise the um, physical inventory, this bin to check it, the warehouse clerk, he, he comes here and he count the stock within the handling unit. Assume that if it's a handling unit based uh, um, rack, then he, he, opens, he, he opens this one, he counts it. Then he realizes that the stock may not be 150, maybe it's 140. So the 10 is difference is there. So to, to correct this stock, you use the physical inventory. So there are different types of physical inventory. Can I do ad hoc basis? Can I do annually? Can I do cyclic, cyclic uh, counting? 
it's all de depends on the business requirement whether how they want it they want to be every one month to do physical inventory for this one or ad hoc basis or annual every one year it's all the business okay so based on the business you adopt resp resp corresponding uh, physical inventory procedure to adopt for that okay and uh, as i said you know everywhere delivery processing you know at the end of the day is a delivery processing you see what kind of delivery processing we have same thing inbound outbound how you have seen delivery processing same thing here the posting changes very elementary will take posting changes if a stock become a f1 stock this is for uh, uh, unrestricted stock okay if i want to become this f1 stock to block stock b5 i can block it that means you are changing certain material so certain quantity to make it from unrestricted stock to blocked stock that is called posting change posting change mean you are changing the stock type from one one restrict unrestricted means you can use anything you can use it but if you put a blocked means you cannot use for that okay and also f2 stock f1 stock to f2 and also uh, even if f1 become f2 stock also the internal it will become a stock change will happen and also like you know uh, this stock become a quality also you can always go for quality q3 so it's like that you know ch changing the stock that is called posting changes and the next one is stock transfer okay as i said you know if is a truck transfer order how you are going to uh, establish the document types this this one and uh, uh, finally is uh, one one two, we have uh, five seven minutes okay. and uh, next uh, cross process settings so cross process is very very important as i said under the cross process setting copy warehouse number this is also 171 best practice system already we have 1710 warehouse already so we copy existing 1710 into our warehouse number as i said our warehouse number is 5710 i'm going to use same company name as a my warehouse number same name 5710 we defined company plant almost same right same name i'm going to use even for my warehouse number also so i copy all the existing configurations 1710 into 57 use under the cross process you can copy warehouse number okay and also you have a handling units how to use handling units warehouse task stock determination value added service how to do when to use exception codes exception code means nothing for example you you supposed to receive certain x quantity but you received less quantity how are going to manage it what level i, I can manage it whether rf device i can manage it or system wise i can manage it. in gui quality manage batch management shipping and receiving cross docking resource management we use the resource management also okay under these these things under the cross process clearly we have real less times okay now because uh, next class we do that but i will create a warehouse number now so this number and as i said always you copy 1710 so nothing is there see if it's 1710 just a definition no address also just a definition only just you can copy it put in the 75 and warehouse cross settings and uh, 5710 and sg sg warehouse okay sastra geek warehouse just a name save it you can save it or if you don't want like you know you want to create a different request always you can create a different request you store under the all warehouse configuration different request as of now i am using all one by one request but if you wish you can always store it why i am storing mean if you want to move this data after implementation one system to development system to quality then using transport only you will use it so 571 i created now this is next so as i said before assigning for example if i want to assign number you put a 5710 your warehouse just flick it now no entry is created that's what i say so i am asking new entry create the new entry see what is asking me now as we discussed now supply chain unit is required without supply chain unit i cannot create anything without custodian 
more or less custodian default party enter Th these things more than enough but ship to party is required when you are going to deliver from our plant to some other location okay that is what uh, we use ship to but as of now we will we'll create one business partner and uh, we will assign this one on the supply chain unit see without supply chain unit custodian default party you cannot create your warehouse as i said to create a custodian or default party entail both are the same name but uh, you know that as i said like you know using bp transaction or supply chain in it slash and scmb uh, su main using the two transaction we can do that okay quickly i can create supply chain in it i'm not going to do this one now uh, okay just uh, you come back again i'm not save i didn't save anything now before creating warehouse number just you define now what i am going to do now i am going to undergoing internal uh, undergoing cross process setting i will try to copy from the best practice system 1710 to my warehouse number you know your warehouse 1710 okay and your warehouse number is 5710 you can always copy this one okay uh, you can copy now or if you don't want once you create it all you can do that okay either but anyway we'll see we'll copy it that it happen see there is already data for destination warehouse name but do you want to continue and override this one? yes you say override it okay as i said now he is asking whether you want to save same transport request or different transport request if you don't want this one you can always provision is that to create a new request store all your warehouse activities and a different uh, transport request so that using this transport you transfer the data from one system to another okay you provide this information to the basis guys please note down you provide this transport request to basis guys basis guys will move from our development system to quality or quality to the maybe production system just you copy it <clears throat> Are you okay, guys? If you take maybe fifteen minutes more time, sure, no problem. Yeah, yeah because, that's okay. Uh, yeah, at least you know we can create uh, some extended minutes, so we don't want. Uh, okay. uh, but I, I believe it will not be just fifteen minutes. It will be around thirty minutes. Um, you are going to I take think... questions also. Like, oh, right. oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, if don't want, then we can stop. If want, you can we can stop at yeah. this moment. Then yeah. we can answer the, all the questions. And the next class, we will continue all the creation of the custodian, creation of the supply chain in it. Then we will uh, we will go to the next one is the integration. Okay, up to your. I will, I do. Yeah. I, do. I, I, I have. Would, to... I would say uh, go go that way because you know. Yeah, it's fine. We, we will stop it. Minutes, Don't it worry. Take more time. Yeah, yeah. We will stop now because we will we will also follow the time bound because I know you people are all busy. Okay. Don't worry. We will stop now. Okay. We will take next step now. Just I will give a two minutes. Uh, what we have done it now. So we have created complete S yes four organized structure. We just moved into EWM. Just we defined one warehouse number, but we are not at all assigned any. Supply chain unit custodian. We have copied existing best practice system seventeen ten to our warehouse five five seven one zero. That's all we have done as of now. So next class we will create B custodian. We will create supply chain unit, and uh, then we will start integration. I know some people ask, what do you mean embedded system, decentralized? How the data flow? So we will we will um, try to make establishment uh, interface between this one at the next class. Okay. Yeah. Uh, questions. We will move into questions now. Will yeah. you be sharing that Excel that you had? Um, I remember you showed in the first video an Excel that had like you know that structure for the warehouse that you had worked on. Yes. Uh, your name, please. Sorry. Can you? So Joe speaking. Joe. Joe. Uh, thanks, Joe. Yes, Joe. Because of the just we are trying to create. Am I right? So next we are all moving to EWM. Then we will we will discuss each and everything that warehouse structure. You should be more familiar 
and based on that one we will create organized structure one by one one by one how many storage types we need how many work centers we need how many bins we need so definitely i will share that one maybe because that is a old template for me but we can create a new template and using existing one we can always modify that and we will discuss it the template next class okay okay thank you i will share that one don't worry i will share that template that is a realistic warehouse where i worked it so you know same thing we are trying to replicate here okay uh questions i will see what are the questions don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos chat first i will start with suggestions for dummy w for dummy warehouse i understand it is needed for distributed center but why it is needed when ewm s4 in the same instance yes vijayajit that's way you know the architect you know that's way it has sap has developed you know if you want to transfer the data you should have a dummy warehouse in a, a s4 system then only this dummy you have seen him right dummy warehouse we have created under the dummy warehouse you have assigned your plant and storage locations uh -huh. that data if you want to be connected this there should be some day that's where the architect they have developed that's I where you know they, i think they just uh, dwm uh, you know they just adopted to the uh, embedded also they didn't want it to have more work there otherwise they don't yeah. need you know that uh, smq1 <laughs> smq2 all that like when i create a sales order i don't do smq1 right it goes to delivery i can create transaction but they just wanted to have both in same instance and they avoided too much yeah. changes there yeah but you know because this is more on technical am right why they are not yeah, 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 it, but, is, it is it so is but probably sap will yeah. change it in the coming yeah. years yeah maybe is future they may eliminate this step yeah. directly but at least some interface requirement the system should understand am right the data what data should be there yeah maybe in future maybe they may eliminate but this what and uh, you know, sir i guess uh, viswajit one i guess everyone is having some exposure to sap you can skip details Hey, it's fine. Yeah, needed new comma that. Yeah, okay. Everybody yeah, I think so. Like maybe once you. No, no, are, that's what. Uh, once I'm more familiar, aware of everybody's background. Everybody, so, then yeah. you know, I can, uh, I can minimize it. Like you know, discussing, uh, showing this navigation, showing these uh, transactions also. Okay. Only thing is, say uh, because this third session, I'm right. So I'm not aware of individual people. Slowly, I will come to know each individual their background, so that you know, I will keep in mind, so that we can uh, skip some of the things. uh-huh yeah and said kalil also when the stock is received we don't want to consider it as a ready for sale because it may need to go through inspection then move to sales storage to be consumed by sales uh said yeah said as you know that i am right any stock you receive it always you know you you need to distinguish whether you received from the customer or whether received from the vendor what kind of stock it is whether it is in how much you received it today or what stock is available for available sale otherwise everything one stock you don't know the which stock belong belongs to that then is what is the point you know we are managing this warehouse okay we, the warehouse we are managing means we want to be clear visibility every pot if it is lying that pot certain place means i can identify that this pot belongs to so and so area and i can give the exact precise and location also why it is lining lying also i can give the even reason also okay that is where you know um, how you maintain the stock types okay so that's what to distinguish what kind of stock it is when you receive it what kind of stock when you when while delivering what kind of stock you deliver it okay that is a where in a managed perspective also they want to visualize the stock they can always visualize in a in a warehouse why operate operation side also people know that what kind of stock it is otherwise uh, is a lot of confusion and uh, which s4 version we are using we are using uh, so you can always check him right the uh, if you look at here so i will change this one next time you know it just remind me so always and i can use what kind of see this one we are using s400 and uh, this is a 2021 am right 2021 see here the s4 has 2021 version in the bottom line at the right corner you can see this you can always see system 
all these things. And also you can see S4 to 0 to 21 years. Yeah, and right. traditionally, SAP WM is a three-digit code. Yes, you are right. Yes, right. Are we going to at least touch base and billing? Oh, no, Venkat, I'm afraid. Yeah, billing. Yeah. Honestly, I've not worked out. So, but maybe if we can, if one week, any document is there, certainly we can share it. Well, I do. Uh, even there are like something labor management and all. So maybe you don't go in the detail, but tell us <laughs> like billing is like what? It's warehouse billing or it's SD billing? Something. Yeah, like yeah. That, right? That's very important. Yes. Yeah. You know yeah. that every, you know, sales side already we have, you know, right? So already yeah. invoice, everything. Even for uh, even um, uh, sorry, product, um, even purchasing side, same thing sales. What is this building? That's what we need to know that, okay? Even transportation side, we have separate. So anyway, I will give you some touch base on this. Yeah, I think this may be the 3PL scenario where you are managing yeah. someone else and you can build it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Are we not going to discuss and work on storage groups? Uh, Venkat, actually, storage groups, you know, is not a mandate in EWM. We don't need also, okay? It's all like, dip, dip, but we'll discuss the, what do you mean of storage groups, you know? Group means always grouping the several storages. But is it really required? I say it's don't need actually. Okay. That is true, uh, Naidu. Uh, but see, like, at least we should have some level of understanding and knowledge in yeah. an event. Yeah. So that is that is objective. Sure. Yeah. We will see that. Yeah. But in real time, I have not used any time. So, you know, we have the SAP as dollar. But we don't uh -huh. need actually storage groups actually. Honestly, I don't need. But still, if want, you know, we can. Yeah, because you like, you know, while you are going through the node, uh, you yeah. are skipping the billing and storage groups. Yeah, so there are so you... many things in this. No, one that is true. See, like, yeah. billing is, billing is, see, like, uh, we are from the SA, uh, SD and MM background. So, you never bill... see, I'm telling this billing is not at all related to your SD. You know, not so at that, all that, is, that is the reason we are curious. We want to know what exactly ah, is this okay. building. Sure, sure, yeah. This billing is completely different from our AWM side, okay? This is not this relevant to either SD or MM side. It is a completely okay. billing, okay? So all billing, you know that S4 side, if you see uh -huh. a procure to pay cycle, if you look Correct. at the order to cash cycle, mm -hmm. what happens is when you procure the goods, once you receive the goods, you raise the invoice and you, um, you know that you pay for using my, my go transaction you that. Until you pay for, so so same thing in order to cash also. You 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 get the order, you deliver the product that people will pay for that. You you mean based on the order you cash it for that money. That so, is correct. Say like yeah. why it is important for me. Say like you know, if I am running a, a warehouse for yeah. various manufacturing companies or a distribution. Say like I am like an Amazon. Yeah. If I need to build my. Uh, the, the customers as well as the, the suppliers. Yeah. I should know what kind of a billing I should be dealing with. Yeah, that's what is all completely business required. As you said, assume that you are the business guy. You wanted to know this one. Then we need to explain, you know, what is the billing here? What we can use this billing? What is the different from this billing to the, uh, apart from like, you know, purchasing and uh, the sales side. Yeah, we will we, we'll, we'll see that. But as of now, I didn't work any billing side of it. Okay. okay, understood. And, and uh, thanks. And same thing with the labor management also, right? So if labor it management, like we the cover time it. sheet and all. Yeah, you yeah. are going to cover it, right? Labor management, but I will give some uh, uh, insight on that labor management. Yeah, little bit idea because I have yeah. a little bit background on the customer I, service. So yeah. if you just tell me, I will give some metal flow and labor management, some insight on that. Sounds so, good. yeah, I will give some insight and see that. But establishing real time is, is as I said, no, it's a real time, you know, is a labor management is a vast subject and also it depends on business whether they need labor management, really capture the efficiency of the warehouse. If we have a resource management enough, we can capture, okay, this person, how many activities they have done. There are you no know, against the European law says that labor management is, is against the labor management because they don't want to capture the efficiency of the every individual. Uh, so that's what if, if some country says, okay, labor, they want to capture the efficiency of the labor, then you use the labor management. So that what time he has done it, how much time he has done it. Uh, okay, is it, um, okay, I expected 30 minutes. Has it done it within the 30 minutes? Has it done it at 40 minutes? It's all time, right? you are capturing is efficiency. So the labor management is, 
depends on the business whether they want to adopt this labor management or not is up to the business okay but as a resource management is more than enough for them to capture the fcmc yeah uh, sorry one more i'm lagging now uh, there are so many things sir said is done it uh, billing is okay rv store store is right is there a rr um, replenishment run schedule periodically yes viswadeep every 6 hours am i right as i said you know it's all like business you know at the end of the day is uh, business so how they wanted you know uh, whether they wanted um, go for um, uh, manual replenishment or schedule replenishment in a, in a, uh, as of now we use for 6 hours you know every 6 hours we run for the replenishment bad job every 6 oh. hours so it's all depends on the business whether you want to go for like you know um daily you may every 6 hours you want to replenishment or every one day you want to or like in hadak basis you want to do that okay and i believe it's the... just like uh, you know uh, based on the bins uh, reorder point or uh, what whatever we say minimum no it is based on that because you need to see if you want to maintain there are certain prerequisite then where to which bins only can be replenish okay you cannot see cannot replenish for every bin from one location to other only there is a designated per bins that bins you have to maintain certain master data as i said minimum maximum and we have to maintain fixed bin concept for that then only system will understand replenishment will happen to replenish from a reserve area to uh, any replenishment bins i mean fixed bins you can say fixed bins or replenishment bins some uh, some configuration required and uh, sachin is asking can anyone confirm if server access is provided to us uh, sachin you can talk to sastra geek whether maybe you can talk aman or uh, somebody else on this one of course they will provide server to you server access yeah, yeah. so hi naidu yeah yeah hi, so I, yeah i have a question like uh, how can we utilize uh, next five days for the better ewm learning like what yeah, are the uh, things that we can do in the next five days in the next five because this we have done three sessions now the first sessions we have given overview second session we have given more on the uh, warehouse related things now you know that what kind of uh, terminology yes. if i speak some terminology you know that you have seen the picture so you know that what i'm talking so now you are doing real time in like you know ewm means you all have done your organized structure ewm side so now we are going to establish the organized structure build the organized structure and then we will uh, once we build the entire organized structure so you you do one by one we will do simple inbound process then we move it into the complex inbound process we do some exceptions we do how you handle it all these things like in a slowly one by one next level is interface set up the interface between the s4 system and the master data Uh, reasonable data then again you move it into the simple inbound process to create inbound process what are the s4 data required you need again custom vendor data a vendor um, uh, again is up some materials so that way you know we will go systematically so that you know uh, when you move it you know that uh, what kind of area we you move it what kind of data master data you need it, so that you can perform uh, process or inbound process or outbound process and so on so on. okay yes thank you yeah don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos yeah thanks yeah 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 we have several documents here so thanks for that um hope i answered all the questions yeah if you have any doubts you know if i if, if i am not in a position to answer some of the questions you know certainly you can drop a message to yes astra ji either parminder or you know even i can answer it in case if i miss it yeah. hello mr naidu yeah hi yeah yeah hi and this is himanshu so uh, i have a Iman. basic question uh, yeah, yeah. See, uh, we have a ecc system and yeah, yeah. and and we want to have a ewm uh, system in a separate box Okay. so we can we can connect both the systems that is fine yeah. now suppose um, a client want to go for a big bang s4 hana roll out s4 hana i mean roll out mm-hmm. we can call or a greenfield whatever it is yeah, yeah, yeah so 
and then uh, and then they are looking for a strategy like like currently their ewm system is um, uh, i mean is well managed and since it's a i mean we have rfcs i mean uh, where data are flowing from ewm to ecc and back and forth correct yes so yeah. uh, what uh, generally i mean uh, see because uh, ewm should be kept as a decentralized because it generally runs for 24/7 environment yeah, so, yeah it's a massive warehouse so, okay. uh, yeah but if client asks that uh, uh, from a consultant point of view uh, mm. and, and and they are into mature wm system and mature mm. ewm system so okay. going forward they are going for s4 hana now yeah. they can either go for s4 hana embedded ewm also correct in the same box or they can yeah, still yeah. Have, I, we yeah. can see what uh, depends on business uh, if they do if is a volume of the warehouse is a, is a medium size warehouse may, so how i can say yeah, yeah it's a big warehouse and, and mm-hmm. they are using all functionalities like handling unit handling unit management and but but, but they want to uh, get rid of some functionalities that is that is uh, uh, that is logical for any business when they want to yeah. go for s4 hana uh, but but generally from a cons- from your experience if we should yeah. keep this ewm as a decentralized one or we should try to uh, put it in a same box and then you can always go for see, you know that centralized everything sitting in one place so they can minimize the transferring the data they can minimize so many integration points right if they even even a embed is also is a more than enough is a, is a good enough to manage even a medium size warehouse also is not like okay. you know yeah use even transactions also okay Okay. even um, so still you can try it and you can minimize it if integrations everything here for example if you can integrate tm you can integrate sales purchasing even you can take quality everything you can in- integrate and the system will be of course uh, everything is there means is a faster enough to do all the transaction same time okay. another when the down time you know whenever something happen then you will uh, you have to bear enough of that but how many times is down time uh, we never know It's all business call them right whether they want to be mm-hmm. uh, so uh, depending on the yeah, yeah, yeah. business so cost yeah. wise cost wise definitely it is it is beneficial to have it in one box correct correct so, yeah. correct yeah you know you it it will reduce them right a lot of uh, it reduce right? amount of uh, it resources required you can reduce but it from, but from functional point of view i mean it it hardly makes much difference correct no uh, difference not much difference not much everything is same all the functionality whatever functionality we have embedded same functionality is in a uh, decentralized one only thing as you said am i right decentralized uh, we have a separate documents there is a as we discussed uh, sometime you know mm. okay. see again you need uh, uh, if you look at here you need uh, again to data flow sif is required and uh, in a core interface required for a decentralized one and also um, there is additional documents is there if is a all this thing we can eliminate you know why if is embedded you can eliminate say first in a decentralized all inbound delivery uh, distributed as a inbound delivery notification again through the delivery notification you can inbound delivery why you know we can all you can eliminate so much data also so if you maintain s4 system but we can't give you like you know straight away few points yeah, yeah. that we have a document where we can present the document you know with the numbers uh, because sap has already developed um, the document between the embedded system to decentralized one and when to switch over uh, uh, what solution is best and um, so based on that one you know you can always you know we can't give simply word actually you can't take simple word but based on the document based on the best practice approach by sap we can go through that we can study that we can suggest that this one saying that this is the these are the reasons we, uh, if you adopt embedded this is these are the uh, benefits you get it if you adopt decentralized line these are the benefits you always merits and demerits is there both solutions among that which one they want to choose is up to their up to the um, business thank you okay thanks yeah but if you want we have documents if want you can detail you can go through that here no no uh, just from your experience i mean yeah because that is logical because it depends on the final decision is from business only 
yeah uh, but but from but from consultant point of view i mean it's one and the same from technical yeah from maintenance and it perspective i mean basis point of view though it is different but yeah cost yeah. wise and all these things so, yeah. yeah okay fine yeah thank you mr nai yeah uh, thank you all if uh, no questions then we will drop off and uh, we will start next session on uh, next week and mr nai generally do you wish uh, to have us the questions in chat towards the end of the session is that the preferred way um because that's what you said is a mode of training you know first we discuss it uh, because today we spend more time because it's the first time you know in further going what we will do is we will discuss half an hour or 45 minutes then we will will answer the question then after that we will move it okay yeah, that is okay. better thank yeah, you that is yeah, better yeah but what happen is in like you know even interactive is a good like you know uh, uh, if you are working studying like you know if everybody is there and you know we teach is also interactive is always good but problem is like you know the flow will miss uh, if if you complete one topic then we can ask if see now you can ask how many questions we can no no interruption for us because the topic is over now Okay. Right. Maybe every no, it's thirty minutes give the words like thing. five minutes, right? After every thirty minutes, give the five yeah, minutes yeah, question, yeah. and then we can. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's why, right? if you five minutes, it goes so much, then we will end up. Correct, and you have to be on the yeah. topic and be relevant. Yeah, yeah topic can go. Yeah, yeah. Can divert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. We, see, we will answer all the questions. You know, if you don't also, we can say don't know, no problem. At least we give, we can suggest. Or oh, this way, we can get the information. This way. Okay. so nobody is a, a expert in everything in right so we can always you know much well we can share knowledge also so now to dilip here i have one question i uh, had dilip here yeah. yeah so uh, so suppose my manufacturing plant is at one location and warehouse is little bit far from it yeah, uh, yeah. so once i do the production uh, finish product You yeah. and a good receipt has happened to the warehouse yeah yeah so when i'm moving the product from plant to warehouse uh, in the yeah. transport when the product is there yeah so yeah how we can see that uh, quantity whether it will be in transport yeah um uh, but i don't know how you are managing see you know that whether your manufacturing plant is also the storage location is a part of wm a part of our warehouse or will be i am based location that's what i said am right anything you want even for example here is a production supply area am right where you are trying to issue the goods for the for assembly for manufacturing for anything you issue the goods mm -hmm. so whether this uh, production supply area within the part of the our warehouse or outside the warehouse if it is outside the warehouse the logic you have follows different if it is a within the warehouse that means the storage locations for example if i maintain separate storage locations for production then is a part of the warehouse only then with then your plant is also your production plant is also a same part of the warehouse then what do you use there is a like internal process and you get the order and you receive you see the goods and as soon as the consumption then your system creates a inbound receipt expect when expected goods receipt then you you will um, inbound delivery is created again as the inbound delivery you receive the goods so it's all depends on business whether they want business one be is a your um, production supplier within the part of the uh, warehouse or as you mentioned am right your warehouse sitting somewhere your plant is sitting somewhere okay yeah. when you get the production order as soon as you release the production order then you create a production request and then production people warehouse request then uh, people will pick the goods and issue the goods right then you need to think that case you know if you maintain your uh, where you will receive the goods from definite available for sale that is i i that is a warehouse managed location if you are maintaining your plant will somewhere they have a different storage location maybe same plant but the storage locations may be different assume that your your manufacturing plant different storage location then then it become a im um, uh, warehouse managed storage location to im based storage location how you are going to establish the uh, documents so that you know the flow the system will propose and uh, 
uh, when you deliver it, system should uh, uh, it should it reach the designated place. Otherwise, you will uh, you will send it some other place. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's what is the two things. Whether you want it with a part of the warehouse or uh, outside the warehouse. If it's a where uh, slightly if it's outside the warehouse, you have to follow a different concept. If it's a within the warehouse, you can follow a different approach. Okay. Uh, Naidu, uh, maybe we can uh, draw the some pictorial uh, next time. Uh, even I wanted to know a little bit more uh, yeah. how the IBD is created because IBD will be created only when you have the two different plants, right? Through the STO scenario, or or on the sales side, uh, on the purchase side, uh, you can do it with one plant also. Yeah. Uh, with the vendor. Yeah. So this but, one is uh, like. Yeah, you but know, when everything we don't have the vendor, we don't have the. Uh, this is the STO. Then yeah. Yeah. This is a complete PP process in embedded one. Okay, yeah. see this is a complete one. First, create a create, a real, uh, create and release manufacturer order and stage it in S4 side. Then the document flow into uh, PMR document, and you create this stage of warehouse task. Then warehouse clerk will move the product or warehouse up move the product to the production supply area. As soon as production sub production people consume the product, consume means. Say consume means like you know depends on discrete manufacturing process industry. If the discrete manufacturing, maybe they they may assemble it. They may manufacture different parts from the raw material, or some just you assemble is also consumption. For example, ten products you use it, you assemble it. That's also consumption. That means you utilize it. Then as soon as the consumption, then post good issue happen because you consumed the goods. Then system will replicate back to the S4 system saying that the stock is consumed. And also same time, you know, uh, even receiving same system, say again as the same manufacturing order, system creates a expected goods receipt. Again as the expected goods receipt, and you receive the handling units from the production. Okay. See, again, as soon as you post the goods receipt, that means you receive the goods, system communicates back to the S4 system. This is EWM system. Okay. This is EWM system. This is the EWM system. This is the S4 system. Okay, and we, as soon as you receive the goods, the system communicates to the S4 system saying that, okay, the goods reset happened and it updates the manufacturer. That says the complete the manufacturer data and also in a consumption wise, you know, complete PMR. If anything stock left in the PS area, you need to clear before closing the manufacturing order. Okay. Then, as I said, when is happening post goods receipt? When you unload it, system automatically say it, it, it automatically goods receipt will happen. Then after that, you create a warehouse task, then move the product from staging area to final bin. Okay, this is a flow, but we'll discuss it more detail. Yeah, but this is just one scenario, right? When the warehouse and the plant is at the same location, it's not a different location and. There can be like three different scenarios. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, you can you can always go different scenarios and uh, yeah. uh, how you are okay. going to do if it is a uh, within the same warehouse location. If it is a um, uh, one is the IM based location, another one is the EWM based location. Okay, can I create Migo deliver Migo deliveries for that to move it a product, or can I create Migo means you create a deliveries whether you create inbound deliveries or outbound deliveries. Okay. Uh, that's also say, possible. Yeah, 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 before, yeah. Before this one. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even like what, what all I'm saying is like IBD is not possible uh, yeah. until and unless, I mean, within two storage location or within warehouse, it's not possible un until you have two different uh, plants yeah. or plant and vendor. I think so, SAP has given all. So, Naidu, uh, means what issue we are facing is that. Uh, yeah. So, for this uh, good issue one, which you are showcasing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can store place the goods uh, into PSA area, and yeah, yeah. from there the issue will happen. Yeah. But the problem is that in production order, though the goods issue is not happen, you can do the confirmation, right? Yeah, yeah. The confirmation means you are consuming them, right? That's what you are saying. System. Yeah, but that actually, consuming. if you are not issuing also, yeah. but still confirmation can be done and good receipt can be happened. I don't think, I think without goods issue because see two things will happen right any any action happened in a EWM side same action should replicate in a, even S4 also right then only system will know that 
yeah otherwise for the replication uh, we created a bad job so okay. bad job will create replicate all the things okay but could issue suppose not happen uh, uh, but till month end you will not get issue but at the month uh, end okay. that uh, mm -hmm. yeah costing okay. problem will come because otherwise i think is you should do every on because you know what happen is one month you may forget am i right uh, different people will change also who is doing what a huge number of atoms are there so yeah, queue yeah, is yeah. getting increased yeah increase the queues and the solving the queues also is a very difficult job i think so dilip are you talking about hogi uh, just just want to add because we are we are i am seeing similar situations uh, dilip are you talking about hogi or uh, other other scenario yeah hogi hogi issues okay okay yeah we can i think we can uh, discuss but, this but I it's in a, in some. erp it is easy that you can uh, clear the kogi easily right but when it is a, a replication from ewm to s4 so yeah. that that creates the problem because you uh, what happens the clerk will not put the uh, issuing atom on the ps area but still your production will uh, carry on So we are thinking of doing some uh, uh, enhancements of adding the PSAs update dynamically. Uh, so that's one avenue we are looking to say that okay, if the if the PSAs and bins are not really correct, that's coming out. How to see from the bill of process or routing, right? How to update it dynamically so that the Kogi uh, backlog is reduced. So that's one one way we are looking. And like you mentioned, there is also shuttle ship functionality when you are moving your raw material from your storage location to your production both are ewm controlled how to create the tasks so these are some avenues we are looking at okay but but good good point i think this little bit early will uh, will touch best definitely yeah, uh, yeah these are the so actually much. main pain areas yeah uh, right our perspective because normal moving uh, from one location to all another location that can be done easily Yeah. But these right. monitoring jobs are main pain areas. Yeah, even even because even you know everywhere you know it will ramp up queues only. Because more inbound deliveries or even outbound deliveries always similar something problem is there all the time. So so if you are not clearing queues, then it will adding adding all the time. Yeah. Do you have any dedicated person is there for queues clearing or? Yeah, we. Create a dedicated person, but it's a goal I have, and he is also not much aware. So he kept yeah. uh, that queue increasing, and yeah. uh, at the month end, then we understand that there is a big uh, yeah, yeah. queue is there. Yeah, because I know he's not a part of this one, but still, you know, people are asking. Just I'm adding information, see that whether we can run through some uh, sessions on this one, whether we can configure and show that uh, steps, all these steps, you know. Uh, yeah. Because before before go, like, giving this one, you know, first we need to test our system, make sure that yeah. everything is working fine. Then only we can confidently say that yes. So I know it's not part of the training, but since you know people are more interested, you know, can explore more on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, shall we drop now? Even for purchase order replications also. So mm. when you uh would do the good receipt for purchase order in warehouse, yeah. and Uh, so major many times what happens purchase order quantity is different and you receive in different quantities yeah. so when bad job try to replicate that into the s4 it it throws the error that its quantity is not matching i cannot replicate that yeah, that's what what we have to do is like you know there is a business requirement you know saying that okay whether delivery can be changed delivery quantity can be changed if it can be changed you know we can use using exception codes Uh, so using exception code i can always accept the lesser quantity i can always accept the under delivery over delivery yeah that's okay. what we have done but mm. uh, that queue get increased because you do thousand uh, good receipts and uh, you uh, why you get system not... should update him right through the ppf you should update that right everything <clears throat> yeah it should update yeah yes for delivery should update for example yeah, yeah, you, there you, is something you... called as delivery tolerance okay So, if we set the delivery tolerance, yeah, it allow it. No, no, but See, uh, they are going about delivery tolerance. And oh, then, oh, yeah, then, then, then you know, it's always similar. Yeah, yeah, you should not remember, right? See, when you that's what MM guys should understand uh, while discussing the um, uh, purchasing department, right? What tolerance they want, how much tolerance they can go for that? Whether twenty percent, thirty percent, or like yeah. what happens if we get it abruptly? 
how are going to handle as i said it is not a one or two delivery mar is hundreds of hundreds of deliveries every day is coming and if i run clearing then you know it's a lot of pressure on the mar- on yeah yeah that, know, so all these kind of delivery. things are uh, getting queued up yeah it's always challenge every day yeah how best you implement in a system the same thing there are the challenges in operational side because of volume of the delivery deliveries they receive and volume of the deliveries uh, outbound deliveries don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest sap videos yeah. Yeah. okay yeah thank you very yeah, much thank you know, you, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah fruitful discussion with you you are experienced guys you know yeah it's a good to yeah, and uh, yeah is like yeah you people can share you know whatever knowledge you have you know always uh, mutually uh, you can gain knowledge even if if any areas i am missing in it, okay thank you very much yeah, thank you thank you yeah. thank you bye thank you all have a nice day and good night and yeah we'll see you on next week bye thank you nato thank you all bye